Now I do feel like a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the number of participants increasing, Dan, as people join us. Well, I've got mine set up, so I just have the, uh, the slides and your faces right now. Oh, okay. I'm not going to be seeing the chat until after, right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, people are just joining us now, so we'll just give them a couple minutes and then we can start. What are we at? Number wise. Uh, let me see, 24 and growing. Perfect. That's a really cool slide that you have there, that first one. Isn't that great? The big wheel, that's impressive, yeah. Yeah, that came out of uh, Zone 32, so. Is that right? Looks like a big I can't, winter can't day. can't remember which district. <laughs> Looks like a winter day. <laughs> Our numbers are continuing to grow. It's just coming to seven, so we'll just give it another minute or two, hey, Dan? Yeah. I think we've got a few few more people coming on right now. Sorry. So maybe just stay in here. Helene, you've raised your hand. Could you maybe put something in the chat chat area and we can Well, Dan, it's just after seven. I wonder if we should get started. That's your call. We can do that. Okay, I think uh, there's a few more people joining at the moment. Six, six more there in the chat. There's six items. Yeah, that's fine. They're just saying hello. <laughs> Hello, Jim Garfield, Margie, <laughs> Helene, and Brian. I'm just going to give it another minute or two because there's still a few more people joining us. Marlene's having a hard time getting in, so I'm not sure what's happening there. Well, maybe we should get started, Dan. I don't want to take too much more time. So uh, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to our uh, district webinar this evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, together, we certainly are navigating a new world where our learning now, we're all learning to do things a little differently. And tonight, we're going to explore different ways of fundraising for our clubs. And I'm really pleased tonight to welcome Assistant Rotary Coordinator for Zone 28, Dan Doherty, 
Uh, Dan is also responsible for a number of districts in, in this part of our zone. And with that connection to all of these districts, he brings a huge wealth of information and connectivity to different clubs that are doing amazing new things with their uh, fundraising projects. So we're really happy to learn more about what's happening in our end of the zone. And again, so pleased to have Dan with us this evening to help guide us through these opportunities that we will be presenting this evening. As we go through the webinar this evening, I'd like you to please use the Q&A and uh, we'll do our best to address all the questions at the end of the webinar. So if anything comes to mind, uh, please uh, jot them down as you are able. I'd also like to welcome Janine Webb this evening from the Calgary Foundation, who's also joining us as a panelist. So welcome Janine and thank you for joining us this evening. So Dan, without further ado, I'll pass it over to you and uh, thank you everyone for coming on board tonight. Hi everybody, that's, uh, well, that's a pretty wordy introduction for me, but uh, yeah, the reality is uh, because of that wonderful experience we had in our, in our district uh, a few years ago as district governor, I mean, it's opened up a whole new uh, rotary world uh, for us. And, and the exciting part of that is what it allows me to learn and see and what, what's going on across, across the, the Canada and the Northeast United States. So it's really kind of a, a cool little role that we've got going right now. And I'm really excited tonight to be sharing some ideas with you. And, you know, we got, this is a different world that we're, we're working in right now. And, and uh, we're all looking for different answers and thoughts and how to do things. And sometimes we get paralyzed by our analysis a little bit. And, and what I, what I want to do tonight is I'm going to work through some concepts I'm gonna talk a little bit about, hey, here's some really neat things that I saw. Mary's gonna add some, some comments about other items, the things that are happening specifically in our district. And, and then at the end, I've, I've got some tools and things that we can look at as a district and we can look at it as clubs that, that can help us make some really, really good decisions. So when, when, you, when you look at the Rotary world, you know, everything's changed right now, right? But really our community, it's all about doing something together. And the, the thing about Rotary, people join for two basic reasons. It, it, over the years, there's all kinds of different things pop into, this, into the scene, but primarily we're here to do some good in the community and, and do it with some incredible fellowship. And that hasn't changed. And the other thing that hasn't changed is our values. And that's you know what we do, how we live, how we connect, and how we operate in in different uh, different communities, right? And you know we're all about how do we build healthy communities in our Rotary clubs and the communities that we're in in Alberta and Canada. It's about building community and strengthening our community, and I and I think that we need to keep that in whatever focus we do and how we build, build out some of our strategies. The thing is this virtual events and virtual world, man, it's opened it up for, for all kinds of opportunities for wide access to wide, wide audiences and all kinds of things. And, and I know a number of you uh, that I saw the roster who was coming today, I saw, you know, it was, it was really cool. I, I know some of you have enjoyed this as I have. I've been on meetings in London, England in Switzerland, in, in Africa, I've been in meetings in the States and learning and seeing the things that are going on in the Rotary world, it's phenomenal. And, and, it, and it really shows me the value of Rotary. And you know, this online fundraising and, and changing the way we do our things, it's really, what a great time to start creating those partnerships that we talk about. You know. The, uh, the theme this year is, uh, you know, the o Rotary opens doors of opportunities, right? And here we are. What an incredible opportunity it is to do more with our Rotaract group. I well, was a meeting today with a Rotor, uh, an Interact club about how to do a, a, a polio event and get the polio, uh, you know, uh, our team in the district together with the Interact club and their sponsoring clubs and do an event uh, uh, for, for polio. Kiwanis. A lot of clubs already are doing things with Kiwana, but you know, at the end of the day, there's another opportunity when we're trying to make an impact in our community 
and we have maybe limited dollars available to us, hey, why don't we just pick up the phone or find out where they are and let's, let's hook up and, and start doing things together. And again, the Toastmasters is one that we've talked about a lot. You know, the district's talked a lot about it and, and right across, you know, the Rotary world, we're trying to really get things happening there. And we're starting to see some connections there. And in every club, we, we need to be thinking about uh, whoop, collaboration and things that we can, we can do. Okay, now where are we? So really, what are virtual fundraisers, right? Really, it's a campaign or event that takes place online instead of being, being, uh, being live, right? And it allows supporters to engage with, it, with any cause from anywhere. And what I'm gonna show you tonight is I'm gonna give you some examples of raffles that, that connect to the community and, and have different things happening, auctions, virtual events like uh, rock, rock shows or, or uh, those types of things. Uh, we've got one happening in our own district right now, uh, working with uh, uh, Tom Jackson that we're gonna show you a little bit about. Peer to peer kind of stuff, competitions, right? We're gonna look at some of those. E-commerce, e like selling things online, you know, taking, uh, you know, those, uh, those shrimp that you sell in Olds and selling them online instead of uh, doing it uh, face to face. Athons, we got a bike athon happening right now in our district. You know, we got some competition and peer, maybe it's a peer thing too, some competition among clubs to get things going and, and charitable giving as well. And all through this, what I want you to start to see is a common theme about collaboration and working in partnership. So we'll, we'll move forward. Now, this is one of the coolest things I saw. This is, this is out of a, you know, Westport, uh, uh, out in the, you know, Eastern United States coast, coastline. They had these traditional lobster fest every year. They, they, they have about 1600 people there, raise 110,000 US. So I guess that's like a quarter million, I guess, Canadian. But they'd spend months, you know, when they knew this was happening, they, they started planning to have a drive-through event. Then they quickly realized that in July, they just couldn't do it. And they needed, they converted it to a 100% virtual event. Huh, a lobster fest, 100% virtual. While they're working through their cash flows right now, this, this is going on as we speak. And they've actually grossed $135 thousand dollars and the reality is they haven't sold a single lobster what what they did is they got focused on their community and their their messaging that they went out to the community with and they said hey our, our community partners the people that we're supporting whether it, it's the food bank or whatever it was they need our funds more this year more than ever and so that re really resonated into a really successful community event. And really all their, all their donations from sponsorships, 20 bucks to 10 grand, they've got sponsorships. You know, we did, uh, I'm involved with another foundation. We did a golf tournament and we raise typically in this golf tournament, we, every year, our foundation, we raise about a quarter million dollars a year. Well, it, it was in June, scheduled for June. Obviously, we couldn't have the event. So we backed ourselves up and said, okay, well, we can't have the event, but we've already got sponsorship money in the bank. We've already got people paying for the golf. We've already got, you know, uh, auction type things. Why don't we just go back to our sponsors as we did, as these people did, and say, hey, can we, when we keep the money in, because here's the foundation. We had the woman's shelter and we had, uh, uh, InStep uh, is a program everybody here would probably know about, or Lotwood. And we said, can we keep this money and donate it to them? So at the end of the day, we were able to maintain and still raise $125,000. And this is the magic of it. We went to the Shaw Group, uh, the, the Shaw Classic, and we had that money matched two to one. So we didn't have an event. We didn't have a golf tournament but we still got $250,000 going to some charities in our community. 
this this uh, rib fest uh, out in Whitby. Uh, I know Lethbridge, they just had a drive through uh, rib fest this year. And, uh, you know, it, it, it had, you know, it had some pretty good success. Now, here's the here's the key. What I want you to think about is what is it? What are your goals for these fundraisers? If it's strictly dollars, you may be disappointed sometimes. But look at this. They usually raise 125 grand with their rib fest. So this year they did 100, 1,100 online dinner orders and they did a paint night and did whatever and they raised 20 grand. But you know what the important thing is? That line they said, a favorite community event continued this year. They maintained the connection to the community. So there's some other events I'm going to talk about in a minute that you know, sometimes maybe our measure needs to be club engagement, the fellowship that came out of putting the event on. Where could we engage live, even if it's on stream, right? We need to look at those types of things. Here's one. Uh, this is a great one. This is uh, Abracadabra. It, it's an auction, online auction that they had for this health, uh, the kids' health uh, for kids. And they, they put together an incredible uh, media program online and, and uh, they, they've had incredible success in this online auction, right? And what I want you to look here is not only do you tell the story in your campaign, but you celebrate the results and you keep people involved in it, right? See, Margie, I see the Medicine Hat also had their drive through rib fest, and it's the first time you're involved, right, in Medicine Hat. So hopefully it, it, was, it was successful as well. But again, that's being creative and, and finding ways to make things happen. Peer-to-peer -peer kind of programs. There's, there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. You know, and you, that's where you use individual participants to compete against others, right? That polio, uh, uh, polio come spin with us started as a, as a challenge from the Sylvan Lake Club, uh, all the clubs across the district. And we got, you know, Marlene uh, as polio chair really picked up on this and has been working with different clubs. And we got a little competition going. That Sylvan Lake, everybody's complaining they got a head start. I think it's just a little keener than the rest of us pedaling, but they're, they're going. And, and what's fun is watching the clubs trying to make, you know, make their, make their targets. Just love competition. People in Rotary definitely love competition, right? And, 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 and the neat thing about that is you can do it in different ways and, and you get peer to peer. That picture that you can see on the slide, that's, uh, that's Marlene and I in uh, the annual polar, polar dip that we do uh, for Servants Anonymous group. And, and uh, they are magicians in the way they use peer to peer competition and you can see that we exceeded our goal as a team and we had other people join our team and it was amazing uh, from other Rotary clubs. And uh, we actually came second. And this, this fundraiser of us jumping into a frozen lake uh, raised $100,000 by getting different people competing in teams and, and whatever. But the key there is people are committed to the cause. Polio come spin with us. We're committed to the cause, right? When we can do different things. Again, the uh, Rotary District 7070. They turned. They have an. They had an annual AIDS walk, uh, and they turned it into a self walk online. Very similar to what we're doing on the bike competition. We used to go every year. Our district and, and our club. We would have this. Uh, uh, polio ride, indoor polio ride to raise money for the fund. We can't do that this year, polio. And, uh, you know, you go virtual. So here they are. They had a virtual walk for AIDS and they raised a bunch of money and and they got, you know, what, what really, when I pulled this off their website, it says, I'm not a Rotarian. Can I help? There, there we are. Again, finding ways to start to connect outside of our own clubs. Here's an online drive, and this is really a cool one. I, I love this. This is in Markham. They partnered with Canada Cares, 
and they provided rotary branded meals for healthcare workers. And guess what they did? You look at this, they supported local business, right? We've got all the, these restaurants and things that are, are really striving to get issues and whatever, right? But they had uh, 3,518 3, uh, meals were served to frontline healthcare workers. Isn't that amazing? They had eight restaurants participating, which they helped. $52,000 was given back to those local restaurants. What if we all stepped back for a second as Rotarians and looked at the small businesses in our areas? I don't care if you're in a big city or little city, we all know of some of these businesses that are struggling. Hey, what if we get even closer to home? What if we look at some of our Rotary friends, our Rotary members who are struggling? Could we do a similar kind of program that links those kinds of combination of, of doing work for the community and saying thanks to healthcare workers? Calgary West just had a, a great uh, uh, program this year. It, we, we sold a bunch of roses. Now we learned this from Lethbridge and their roses program. And we, we sold a dozen roses for, for um, uh, you know, for a fundraiser, and then we would give them out. The idea was to use those roses to say thank you to somebody. So a number of people took those roses, and, you know, Marlene and I did this in the school. We, we bought uh, a dozen roses for all the, all the workers, or the teachers and caretakers and admin in the school. And we went to the school and we gave those roses to the teachers to say thank you. Mm. Well, I, I tell you what, most of the people that know me know I'm a leaker to start with. But when I, when I start doing, you know, so we started presenting these roses and trying to say thank you. And when I looked up and there was teachers in tears because nobody had ever said thank you to them. All they had was the stress and the anxiety of what they're doing. And for us to say thank you, well, you know where I went with that one, with my leakage. And, and the impact was phenomenal. And for days after, our daughter was saying that the, 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 the teachers and the, the caretaker were coming in and just saying thank you again. And, and, it had, and they opened up about their own personal anxiety. So... How can we, you know, think outside the box a little bit here and start finding some of these linkages? And also, the, the Roses fundraiser, I think we raised $5,000 or something like that. But the measure of success is not strictly measured by the dollars. And I think that's something that we need to really understand when we're going in. What else can we measure? The measurement for me was the impact we had on those teachers. You know, virtual bingos. We heard about these early. Uh, we did We did a bunch. We did our club did some, but uh, districts have done them. And again, you can see here, bing, virtual bingo nights, North Shore uh, Club. Uh, we got the E-Club of Hawaii Drag Queen Bingo Night. We had the Rotaract Manhattan's Wine and Paint Night, Pub Trivia Nights, right? Have fun, active driven events. They're, they're low cost, right? Um, we've got uh, actually, uh, I think the next one, in our own district, uh, this Saturday, we've got the uh, District 5360 Bingo for Polio, mm -hmm. coordinated with uh, the Chinook Club, Rob Wilson and, and Marlene, uh, as polio chair, they're putting, putting this program together. And you for $26.50, Mary, now why would it be 20? It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I'm all registered, ready to go. It's going to be a lot of fun. And on a cold, snowy Saturday night, why not? You know, at 2650, there's a, there's a real number of that. Wasn't that the first amount of money that went into the Rotary Foundation? There's yeah. certainly magic in that number, Dan. <laughs> a little magic. You do that, you, 2650, it's a donation. It'll go right into the polio fund. And then you're going to hear from a polio survivor. And then we're going to have a little fun playing some bingo. So think about ways to connect with people and do some things. Here's another one, uh, Kamloops West. 
they've got a, a program where they're selling cards, right? Two, two for one of everything, buy a card and win. You know, it's, it's a restaurants, it's different things. You've got golf savings and whatever. Now here's a neat thing is they sell these cards online multiple times during the year. And they could raise 15 grand per pop on these, these different uh, programs. The other thing is what they do is they find sports groups or other nonprofits sometimes, and they partner with them to sell the tickets or the books. And again, I come back to that challenge for all of us to say, hey, what local business can we support? What, what rotary business can we support? Now, I know there's going to be people who say, well, that's not why we joined Rotary is for business. But you know what? That's what Rotary started as, is a business club. And that's why we had different classifications. We had different things. We were there to not only mentor and support each other's business, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with, especially right now, when we have Rotarians who are hurting, or businesses right around us that are hurting, hey, let's let's get them involved. Let's support them while we raise some money. Just a bit of a challenge there. So <clears throat> the other thing is we've got these 50-50 draws and, and those types of things. Again, a bunch of clubs have tried them and there's different ways to do it. Here's a couple of really successful ones. And uh, uh, the one at the top, you know, I say, we take the 50-50 outside of our clubs. Right now, if we're just inside our club, well, you're going to get what you get, right? Uh, it's going to be like a meeting 50-50 and you're going to raise 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks. Maybe you might get a little bit more. But here, what if we start opening up and getting outside our club and we find ways to collaborate? So the first one is Kamloops West's uh, Cash for Holidays. <laughs> what a cool idea, isn't it? Let's, let's have a 50-50 draw to, or, or some kind of jackpot that people can invest in outside of Rotary and Rotary, but that money can go towards their seasonal uh, buying uh, habits. But the one that's really interesting and the one I'd like all of you to start thinking about, how better can we, how better can we when we collaborate? Right? You can see this is Langley Rotary 50-50. And I, there's a number of clubs in Langley. It's not one club. So this would be like all the clubs in Red Deer, all the clubs in Medicine Hat or Lethbridge, or some of the rural communities getting together and having a mega or the district, if mm -hmm. that's a bit of a challenge to our leadership team this year. But you know, we could do that and have a mega draw. And here's the thing, look at, look at the demographic they're appealing to here. It's not male, pale, and stale, I'll tell you that, right? But again, it, they've went outside and the current jackpot is at 50, over $50,000. I think, I think uh, today it might be over $60,000 if you go have a look at it. But again, it's collaboration, it's thinking outside of our club, our clubs, individual clubs, and looking at multiple demographics. Here's, you know, there's a couple of our clubs have tried these drive-in uh, movie movie items. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get this to work. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, Mary, you're going to have to tell me, is that uh, coming up? So far, it's so good, Dan. It's coming so up. Far, yeah. so good. Oh, there we go. Right, everybody. Yeah. The Young Professionals Rotary Club was a hit at the box office. Ryan Baum says they've had plenty of positive feedback about the club's first major event. And best of all, it's helped raise funds and fill the shelves of the food bank. I'm excited. I think the first event we put on was a success. You know, the donations were high. God, we filled our van full, exceeded the truck that we had brought down there. So we switched to the cargo van and, and that was filled up. We had some cash donations. We had some uh, GoFundMe donations. So I think all in all, I think people enjoyed the show and we're happy to, to come down to it. Wow, awesome. All right. Man, this is what we're doing. 
The club is now preparing for the July 1st drive-in event, also in support of the food bank. We're excited that every dollar that comes in from this point on is going straight to the, the food banks. You can you can donate in multiple ways. There's always food donations, cash donations. Our GoFundMe page is up and running, and, and we're well on the way there, and then as well as sponsorship and partnerships for the, the July 1st event. I mean, we had uh, Chinook and Centennial Clubs. You guys did put on yours, uh, the Rotary Movie Night out of McMahon, right? And here's what I want to talk about again. You can see on my slide, it's not always about the money, is it? Money is part of it. But you, you saw on that slide, think about the promotion. That, that was on, on, on TV. That was on the news. That was in the local paper, right? The, the, the connection that made to the community was outstanding. The fellowship, I don't know if you, every one of those Rotarians wearing those vests had a smile on when they were, were doing that, right? The community service, raising the, the food for the food bank, they got more than they, they thought they would. And, you know, uh, and I was talking to Paul Gadette from Chinook last night at Cur Rotary Curling, and uh, he said, you know, okay, we didn't make a lot of money in those events, maybe four grand, two grand each. But again, the important thing is you don't always measure the success of these things the first time through, and secondly, just by the money. So I want we need to be thinking about that. Right now, here's here's an online opportunity right now that, that's floating around. Uh, you know, the you know, Huron Carol. It's a it's a pre-recorded program with Tom Jackson and and. Uh, you know, there's ticketing and registration things involved in it. Oh, 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 hey, I just saw this. We gained a new member at Centennial from the drive-in. <laughs> That's cool, right? Awesome comment back, right? This online opportunity, you know, with the Huron Carroll, I'm using this as a concept, and it's one that I think maybe, you know, you can look at, especially if we can really get the clubs working in collaboration to get this to work. And then you've got to figure out how to share the money and do those things. But pre-recorded by Tom, he does a lot of great things for the stay in school programs and those types of things anyway. He'll do a pre-recorded thing. You can do ticketing, you get uh, online donations can be made. Uh, and you know Tom will do a pre-recorded kind of reception or pre-reception -pre and record some stuff. And you can select the dates. There's a cost to it. But what a neat way to raise some money to provide a professionally done program with, with Tom and, and the group of artists that he's using uh, to raise some money. So it's kind of a challenge out there. And this doesn't have to be just Calgary. This can be anywhere in the district that we tie into this thing. And you can have up to a thousand people on there. So if you had a thousand people paying 20 bucks, I'll let you do the math. Here's another one, like the success story of a campaign, the Twin Bridges Rotary had a gift of life program uh, that was leading up to Giving Tuesday. Does everybody know what Giving Tuesday is? I'm not sure if, uh, oh, I can't see responses, but, but the reality, Giving Tuesday is a program every year where a lot of corporations and organizations will match donations that come in on Giving Tuesday. So they had this program going, you know, their goal was to raise 2,500 bucks and they raised $27,000 for the program, right? They had, had a different thing going. So here, here's kind of the gist of it, isn't it? We got to know what you want to accomplish before you start. I mean, I've given you a whole bunch of really neat ideas. And there's other ones going on. We had, you know, Olds had a virtual golf tournament. We had different programs going on and different clubs working on it, right? And, and here is, you know, we've got some creativity, but we're, some, a lot of our clubs aren't willing to shoot the puck. And I think it is because we've got some conflicting things happening within our clubs where, where we're going, What's our value base? What's the vision of what we're trying to accomplish? And again, if we get strictly focused on the dollars, I think it's hard to
to really move a successful program forward. If you have a clear vision, a clear connection to the community and what you want to accomplish, and is based on our core values of service above self and being connected to the community, I think you're going to have a lot more successful program. So what have I learned from you know, talking across the zone and talking to different individuals about of an event? You need to have a key message and you need to keep it going, repeated, 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 <laughs> to really get a solid program in place or thought process in place to promote, to promote what you're doing, right? You've got, um, you know, share, share the impact. So when you're talking about whatever you're doing in the community, and you saw that in that clip uh, with the Cochrane Club, where they shared the impact of what they were doing to the food bank, right? Link it, keep linking it, keep linking it, right? And always update everybody, the people that are participating with you on where the dollars are. If you can engage in, if you're working on a specific cause-driven program, then you've got to make sure you get them engaged in creating the message, getting the message out and, and moving forward. If possible, a lot of these have kind of a mixed live action and a pre-recorded portion. So what that me really means is you can, you can have a build up to a 50-50 draw or whatever, but what if you created the, the climax of the, of the deal was you had that on the draw online and you were able to have some a reason for the people to be there, even a, a way for them to top up the donations to see if they could get in, right? As much as you can involve the people that you're dealing with. Plan it out. Go slow first, but once you're, once you're ready to shoot the puck, shoot the puck, right? A really good thing too is to test drive. Test drive whatever you're trying to do, especially if it's an online thing. Have an event, try it beforehand, make sure it's all working. Make sure everybody's do in sync on what you want to do and uh, get moved that forward, right? And the other thing is staff the event, right? Um, you've got, here's the, here's, here's the interesting thing. We, uh, we assign fundraising to a committee in our club and we maybe have one or two people in there and they have this stress of making sure that things meet the criteria and they do the different things. Well, you know what? To me, this is, everybody is accountable for this inside the club. And the best programs and the ones that you saw that I've represented, they are very clearly the ones that have club commitment. And everybody doesn't have to write a check. That's not the commitment, is it? The commitment is, hey, we need people working on the promotion portion of this. We need people, you know, reaching out to contacts outside of our Rotary Club. We need to find it, but we need the club committed. I think it's a real important thing. The, um, let's just see, Margie, under the guidance of past President Karen, we had a very good look at the impact of our club over the decades during the centennial year. And you know, celebrate those connections, celebrate those, those things that where you have had impact. And the more you can tell that story, the more you'll engage your community. So there's some, there's some opportunities here. There's some platforms out there. And you know, to be honest, uh, this, a lot of this started uh, with Mary and I looking at different platforms and we're gonna have a district platform that we can present to you. And, show you all these options. But what we found is there's, there's goods, there's bads, there's lots of different opportunities. Some of you have tried some of these, some not. And so I'm gonna start with one of the platforms and one of the ways that we need to really be focused on is that understanding if we're doing true charitable giving and, and that type of thing, and people want a tax receipt for it, not like they want for a lobster, right? But if they, want, if they want true charitable giving, 
we have set up, Mary's done a tremendous job of setting up this connection to the Calgary Foundation. We, every one of our clubs that don't have their own ability to give tax receipts and be a foundation can go through the Calgary Foundation. And we have Janine uh, uh, Webb on the line who, who can maybe explain a little bit about, you know, how the, the Calgary Foundation can help your club do, do some of this and, and what their cycle of giving and, and receiving will look like. Janine? Hi, yes, thanks, Dan. And um, hello, everyone. I'll do um, uh, an additional quick intro. Um, I'm not only a vice president donor engagement at the Calgary Foundation and here um, in service to the clubs, but I'm actually a Rotarian myself. My husband and I are uh, members of uh, Rotary Club of Calgary, the downtown club. And so um, I'm a Rotary exchange mom. I am a mentor in the stay in school uh, mentor program and uh, I'm on the small grants committee of our, uh, of our Rotary Club. So proud Rotarian. Um, and as it turns out, as in my role at the foundation, I am honored to serve Rotarians. So um, here in that capacity, I can tell you that um, we've had the pleasure, well, first of all, it started with a, 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 a possibility conversation with uh, Mary and Dan um, over a year ago. Um, about, and again, they, I think uh, kudos to uh, the amazing leadership of the district because they had their radar on, um, they knew that clubs had the potential um, to kind of take the lid off of their fundraising initiatives. At the time, COVID wasn't anybody's uh, sight line, um, but they were having these really um, impactful <laughs> conversations about how else clubs could be inspiring philanthropy. And it was really nothing more than just kind of a fact finding mission about what the foundation does and how and the synergies between us and Rotary. And as it turns out, um, you know, over a year later, uh, here we are in the middle of, you know, uh, a pandemic and uh, unprecedented times. And um, we have a number of clubs that we've been proudly serving and working with that have funds at the Calgary Foundation and um, have been utilizing our structure, our resources, our community knowledge, um, and the ease of which we can process donations to enhance their fundraising initiatives. And it's really important, I think um, the ease is important. Uh, there's so much need in the community, knowing where to place your great time, talent, and treasure as Rotarians is a tough decision. Um, there's no lack of asks and not enough uh, money for everybody. Um, also, your donors are getting asked so much. Uh, Rotarians are being asked, us as philanthropists are being asked. And so where to place your hard earned dollars is also uh, a bit of a question and a tough decision to make. So this is just one of the ways Calgary Foundation can lean in um, to uh, the work that you're doing and offer our community knowledge. So I'm just gonna share my screen if, that's, if I have those permissions, I think. Um, oh, I you should you should have Janine. Uh, what, do I have to stop sharing mine? Perhaps. Oh, probably yes, Dan. Okay. Okay. Oh, doesn't look like I have permission. It says disabled participant screen sharing. That's okay. Um, I can uh, I can do this without sharing my screen. So um, we have a number of ways, obviously, that. Um, we can support um, Rotarians. But first of all, I, I think it's important to just show the alignment between the two. At the Calgary Foundation, we inspire philanthropy. We support the charitable sector, and we're also building a permanent endowment so that we can address the needs now, but also the needs in the future. We are built on an endowment model that is uh, here for everybody today during COVID and what we know now. Um, but of course, as this pandemic unfolds, as many crises unfold, um, we also are committed to um, being there for people we have not yet met and for needs we can't predict. And I think that again, Rotarians share this, um, this desire to inspire philanthropy. Um, you do it in your actions. Uh, you certainly do it with the four-way tests. We, uh, you do it in your granting, the thoughtful process with which you apply to um, your charitable goals and to the needs in the community. And so we feel like we're really well aligned here and some great conversations have come out of that alignment. 
Um, last year, our 2020 numbers have just been released and there was $54.9 million granted um, uh, through the Calgary Foundation to 996 charitable organizations. So hopefully what you hear in those numbers is the reach that we have. Um, if you're a club that is struggling to figure out what's happening in the community and it is an ever moving target, especially now, um, if you really are just trying to pinpoint the most critical needs, if you are looking to connect with charities in a broader way, more meaningful way, Calgary Foundation can help. We have that 30,000 foot view perspective and that bird's eye view on what's happening. Um, and so we can connect you. We are conveners. We bring Rotarians and clubs together with um, charities and we can have good conversations about, about what the needs are. We can also um, quite uh, aptly and transparently share with each of the clubs what we're doing. Some of the initiatives that we're undertaking, especially during the, during the pandemic, our pandemic recovery fund, which is now um, heading into um, our phase two, over 200 applications uh, for that, what those applications are saying, what the charities are telling us. And then uh, I'll um, tell you a little bit more about some of the other resources that we have. But really what I'm here to kind of do a quick update on for you is the funds themselves. So during these times, my background um, was in the nonprofit sector. So I'm, I'm, I wear many hats in this webinar apparently. Uh, the other hat that I have is uh, for about uh, over 10 years, I was a director at In From The Cold before coming to Calgary Foundation. So I have a long history in the sector, um, working with the frontline staff and um, with uh, the families and children living in poverty and um, have very, very well versed again on uh, what it takes for charities to keep their head above water, what it's like to go to bed at night and wonder how you're gonna keep the shelter lights on. Um, and one of my main responsibilities was um, I was in charge of fundraising, as it were. So a long um, history and experience of being out there and certainly being in the place that you're at in service to others, be it multiple charities or the one that you've fallen in love with, which was my case. Um, and what I discovered really on, early on actually in my fundraising career at the end was that in times of turmoil and times of trouble, it really becomes less about the one $1 million gift and much more about the $1 million gifts. So that inspiration, the, the getting your message out to more people and making it easy for those people to give is really important. So that's where we come in or can come in. Um, how can we serve you? Well, uh, and it's a little shortened time to be able to go into detail, but we do have another webinar that's available on the district website um, that actually lays out exactly what a flow through fund at the Calgary Foundation would look like, what we can do, what we can't do, limitations, um, but most certainly I'll provide my contact uh, information at the end of this or um, uh, we'll, maybe uh, we can send it out after and anybody can contact me for more information. But we can provide you with a flexible flow through fund. So it's a fund at the Calgary Foundation that is designed to receive funds, tax receipt those donations instantly online, which is really important again during COVID. Um, not a lot of people are comfortable touching paper. There's not everybody, not all of the, the people you'll be in touch with uh, are comfortable even going to the post office. Um, but making an instant online donation and getting a tax receipt for that donation. Very unique to some of the clubs um, that don't have their charitable status. So these flexible flow through funds are uniquely named for your club, uh, each club. Um, again, fast, efficient tax receiving for donors with the online option. Clubs then also get access to our secure online donor portal, which is called Donor Central. And um, that actually is really helpful because through Donor Central, um, you can access fund activity reports month to month for your financial reporting. You can track contributions into the fund. And as a club, you can actually submit grant recommendations. So you just go online and um, an authorized representative can just go down, pick the charities you wish to grant from the fund to and, uh, and do it right there at arm's length without even having um, to work with us closely. Although I think you kind of would want to. Um, we have a lot to offer, but it's also a user friendly format and um, we have lots of tutorials and videos on how to use that. Um, but also 
this is kind of where it, it reduces the administrative burden on club volunteers. And if any mm -hmm. out there that have done the galas or like myself have volunteered and done, you're shaking your head, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's worth it, but it is a lot of work to raise money. Um, and so we can help you with that. And we're constantly asking ourselves, how else can we help you? What more can we be doing? Um, but certainly reducing the administrative burden on your club volunteers is one way we can help. Um, we can actually make direct deposit granting to most charities. So while it does take a little bit of time to get those grants out the door um, with a bit of due diligence behind it, we can uh, take funds from, uh, you know, inspired by the club and send them directly to the charities right into their bank accounts. It gets them again, the, the dollars into the hands of those that need it most when they need it most. Um, and the other pieces is charitable research and our knowledgeable team. So you'd like to talk about uh, youth poverty or what's happening in the homeless sector. I may be your gal, but I also work with a, a, an amazing team. We have 39 staff members. Most of us do come from the nonprofit sector, all four corners of it. Um, and we are happy to uh, do some research. We are happy to share with you this vast amount of community knowledge that we have access to. Um, you have access as a fund holder to all of our resources and can explore the philanthropic initiatives and programs that you and your members care deeply about. We have an online um, knowledge center uh, where you can peruse the, the up-to-date needs uh, of charities. And then we've even refined that and created a COVID-19 urgent Calgary charity needs page that uh, lists exactly what the charities need right now, how much they're going to need. And then it also is a real time tracking of how they're doing in their fundraising efforts. So charities will pop up and come off as they reach their goals. So again, it's just that trying to hit the target that is moving so quickly right now on, on what the community needs are. Um, we are here to, uh, to assist you. And I'd like to offer that um, regardless of whether you create a fund with the Calgary Foundation or not. Um, we are here to serve and to um, inspire and educate and inform, um, but most importantly, to help you do what you do. And so uh, it is absolutely not necessary to have a fund at the Calgary Foundation to take um, uh, advantage of what we have to offer. And um, oh. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So th thank you very much, Janine. I mean, that's, you really brought, brought to life what we're trying to do and accomplish. And, and a couple of the questions that came up, you know, does the district and or foundation have a list of major community needs? And, and that's really what you were articulating that, yeah, we, we really do. And, and, and what I think one of our takeaways, Mary, as a district is to maybe coordinate a, a meeting uh, with some of the, uh, the, the dis different clubs, whether it's when you're all presidents meetings or, or whatever, uh, Janine, maybe to have a little bit of a dialogue around to, Absolutely. Uh, to start that. And the other, the other thing is, do, does the Calgary Foundation charge an admin fee? And, and it's a 1% fee of the money that, that's collected, right? That's right. It's 1% on the way in the door and what lands in the fund, the balance of the fund, uh, will never change until that is granted out. Then there's one following question there at the at the end there, uh, Janine. Do all foundations in Alberta use the donor central option? Um, no, actually, I uh, I believe that you know the majority of community foundations. Now there's 191 of us across Canada. Mm -hmm. um, we you know kind of pick and choose the platforms that work, but donor central by far I think is one of the most popular platforms. Um, it's a secure um, donor portal that, that seems to work very well for our donors. And I also think it's, um, I wanted to add to in terms of that cost efficiency. So when you make a, a when a, your donors or your, um, those that make a donation to your initiatives at, to a fund at the Calgary Foundation, the, there are no credit card fees uh, for up to $5,000 made online. So again, those efficiencies. Uh, we cover the the transaction fees for any gifts online for up to five thousand. So the amount that the donor will give will be the amount they tax receipt, one percent cost recovery, and just that's all that uh, um, is taken off before it lands in the fund. So again, the goal is to get as much into the hands of the charities as quickly as we can. Okay, I think well, I think I think we need to to move on, and maybe we'll have some questions at the end, Janine, if we can. 
can go there as well. So, so thank you so much. What I want to make really clear is that the Calgary Foundation is for it's it's Calgary Foundation, but it's for all the clubs in the district that this has been set up. And so it's not. You, it will be uh, it, the Calgary Foundation in trust for Olds Rotary Club or Red Deer Rotary Club or whatever the group is that comes in. And and so don't don't get uh, you know don't get hung up on Calgary and the foundation part. You know? <laughs> so and it and it's really. You only want to use this if you're going to, uh, you're trying to raise money and they have charitable kind of uh, donations because any money that goes in to your fundraiser in your account must go to a registered charity. So you, you don't have the ability to flow that out. So that's where these, some of these other platforms can, you can really be used to look at, at helping you. And, and you know, oh, I don't have time to go through what oh, I went too far back. What am I doing? Don't have time to go through them all, but but I want to talk about some of them. Like Trellis Org uh, is a, is a all-in-one revenue-driven platform. It's basically a, 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 a social enterprise. And it's based out of Kelowna, and it has all the different things you can imagine, whether it's auctions or raffles or or uh, peer-to-peer you know, -peer kind of fundraising or, or, or merchant type selling programs. They've got all those platforms in place and, you know, the fees are a little bit more than the 1%, but I think on average it works out to about 3% or a little bit more of that. And, and the support that they give you in setting up these platforms, linking it to your websites, linking it to your, your social media campaigns, it's really quite phenomenal. They've been quite successful already uh, with a couple of Rotary Clubs in, in District 5060, um, uh, Kamloops, Kelowna, obviously, uh, and uh, I think Vernon, there's a couple others in there as well. So it's really worth a look. Now, I, anybody who wants this presentation, this is recorded and you can get this live, or if you want, I put in the uh, chat, I put my email address and you can send me an email and I'll just, I'll pop out this PowerPoint to you. The next one is uh, Raffle Box, which kind of focuses on the raffles, right? It's a simple platform for nonprofits, and it does online raffles and 50 50 fundraisers. And a number of clubs, I know the Calgary Club have, Calgary West have used uh, Raffle Box already. Uh, their fees are a little bit higher and, and admin size, but they really, under, again, understand the, the legalities of working in that. Uh, with AGLC and when you need to have licensing and working with that. Trellis is very good at that as well from a Canadian perspective. One of the strongest uh, uh, programs out there is uh, the Event Groove and it's being used quite a bit in the United States or in District 50 uh, for, uh, just, or Zone 32 to, to, and they do the same thing as Trellis. Uh, their fees are slightly higher uh, they're an American group and we have some, you know, we're doing some due diligence on making sure that uh, how, what they can and cannot do in the Canadian marketplace. But I really think it is something that you should look at because both the Trellis website and the Event Group website are outstanding in giving you ideas and ways to put together these ongoing online platforms and, and giving. Uh, CanadaHelps.org. It's a de their uh, destination for donating and fundraising online for foundations. So if you go there, so there's, you know, in our district, I think there's five of our, uh, 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 five of our clubs have a, a charitable uh, number. So they're already registered within uh, Canada Helps and they can link and help with different fundraising kind of programs as well. And they are, again, very, very cost effective and they also have, they will link some of their fundraising to different uh, campaigns as well. So really, really worth everybody going to, to have, a, have a look at that. Um, the other one is uh, oh, online. Come on, Dan. Online, uh, raiserotary.org. It's a, a Rotary International one. And it's a way to transform uh, so you're giving 
uh, and to give to the Rotary Foundation. So it's really kind of focused on, on that foundational giving, but it is definitely something that, that you should have a look at. So I wanna to try to bring, bring some closure to this. And I wanna give you some points that you really need, need to really pay attention to. And you need to really, in your plan, before you kind of launch one of these, is to how do you connect to the social media? Have a full social media program. And you saw most of those ones that I had, I had websites associated with them and, and some of the things they were doing, amazing social media. This is a quote, I guess it's uh, American uh, voting time. So I thought this was appro uh, appropriate and from Franklin D. Roosevelt, do something. If it works, do more of it. If it doesn't, do something else. So, you know, everything we try isn't gonna work. But the thing is, we gotta try, we gotta shoot the puck. And here is one of the things that is so important it's so important in everything that we do, whether it's a live event or it's a, a online fundraiser, say thank you as many times as you can say thank you. Report on the results. Always, always report. On the results. It may not be the results you wanted, but you know what? People need to know that, right? It's just as much as when you have a big success. Please do that. You know, and the other thing is keep sharing how you're using your dollars. Maybe it's not a specific cause driven, but it, you know, you saw that lobster one, it had a number of different things that they did. You know, be upbeat and be grateful mm -hmm. and build a sense of community. That's the key thing. So I guess that that's kind of brings our program to an end. And uh, I think we've, We've answered most of the questions, have we, Mary? Yes, we have, Dan. As they've come in, they've all been addressed, and I don't see any new ones on the chat or in the Q&A at the moment. So it looks like we've covered everything so far. But I think, you know, if there's more questions that come forward, I think Dan is more than happy to answer any questions that come after the, the webinar is finished. So he did indicate his email address earlier in the presentation. This is being recorded for all of you, so you will be able to share this with your clubs if other members were not able to join us this evening. So uh, I really appreciate your support and your leadership, Dan, and I really support uh, appreciate Janine, you being with us on this evening as well. It's been a great opportunity to share ideas and, and to get engaged with our communities and give back. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody.